моїм серцю лежав, ти ж на моїм серцю лежав. On this Good Friday, music that has special significance for Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Bob. Good afternoon from sunny Kyiv, uh, the Ukrainian capital. And because today is Good Friday for Western Christians, uh, including the Roman Catholics here in Ukraine, uh, I thought this piece of haunting Ukrainian chant would be appropriate. Uh, this song is played at every single funeral for fallen warriors uh, in, in this fight against Russian aggression. And it's an ancient song. It's about the Tesha River, uh, which is, uh, divides uh, Ukraine and Romania in the Carpathian Mountains. And the words go, Hey, a duck is swimming on the Tesha. A duck swims along the Tesha. And then with great pain, uh, the, the singer says, Mamko je moya, Mamko je moya, my mother, my mother, Nelly Mini, don't scold me. I don't know where I will die. And then the mother replies, Hey, what if I'm not sorry, son? What if I'm not sorry? You were lying on my heart. You know, the mother was saying, please don't go to battle. And the son's saying, I must go fight for 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 our freedom, for all of us. And and so this song, I just saw a video, for example, of a funeral uh, last week in Lviv with one. You got another great hero uh, uh, named Dimitri of the of for the people of Lviv. Uh, this song was chanted at the monastery of Saint Michael the Archangel uh, during his funeral. And you know, Saint Michael is a big symbol both in Judaism and Christianity of the fight for good against evil. In fact, President Zelensky added Saint Michael uh, in 2021 to the national emblem uh, of Ukraine. And so this this is deeply felt, I think, especially on this day in Ukraine, most people, the Orthodox Christians and the Greek Catholics who are part of the Roman Church, but uh, Orthodox in style, they'll celebrate Easter starting from next week. Uh, but but the sort of everyone is still in that Good Friday mood here today. Uh, meanwhile, uh, this past week, just a few blocks in that monastery in Lviv, uh, where, where, that, where that song was played uh, a few days ago, uh, the there was a, there was a Russian Orthodox Church. In Western Ukraine, there never were too many Russian Orthodox churches, uh, but there were a few. And the, the people of the parish decided they wanted to be part of the Kiev Patriarchy and no longer part of the Moscow Patriarchy. And the local Russian Orthodox priest, uh, the, 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 like the chief priest, really, he was trained in Moscow. Uh, and there's so many connections. We have ample evidence of the uh, traditional KGB ties and the modern Russian uh, Secret Service ties to the Russian Orthodox Church. And so the local leader of the Russian Orthodox in Lviv uh, said, no, you know, we're going to stick, uh, you know, stick with our Russian style. And there was a bit of a, a peaceful rebellion. The people stormed the church uh, in Lviv. And, and now they, 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 they're, they're, this Russian Orthodox Church is now in union uh, with the patriarch in Kiev. Uh, and so we do see, you know, while you have the battles raging in Bakhmut and the front lines, there's also a different type of front line uh, throughout the country. And I also I think today of um, you think of these uh, these words of T.S. Eliot, the great poet, uh, British and American. He said, the bloody flesh, our only food, the dripping blood, our only drink again, in which in spite of which we call this Friday good. And, you know, you think today, especially of the idea of sacrifice and all all those who've died, uh, the, the warriors who, are, who, who have died, who are continuing to suffer uh, in battle, and also, you know, the children who've been killed in all these missile strikes, uh, all because, uh, you know, Moscow does not want the people of Ukraine uh, to be free. And so this is the day to recall the, those, those sacrifices uh, in this ongoing struggle. Very sobering to hear all that, uh, Joseph. Uh, on, a, on a brighter note, and you've talked about this, people from all over the world are coming to Ukraine to help. And I know you recently uh, spoke to some volunteers from Germany, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I was thinking, Bob, because so many of your list, of, of the listeners here have written in, uh, you know, asking how they can help. And I thought it would be good to begin to introduce some of these amazing groups. You know, Ukraine is about horizontal structures where little groups work together to solve problems. And I've really seen that here in the wartime. And it's not just Ukrainians, it's people that come from all over the world. Uh, and, and that's really been so much of this resistance uh, to the Russian aggression, uh, these small volunteer groups. And, you know, in the early uh, weeks uh, and months of the war, you know, everyone was struggling to supply soldiers at the front with what they needed. Uh, our Ukrainian Freedom News team and everyone we knew, you know, we were desperately trying to get uh, 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 IFACs, these individual first aid kits, 
uh, chest seals, which you know, forty six dollars each. But uh, you put the se- if you get shot, you put the seal on, and it increases your likelihood of surviving. And the troops really needed these things, and they were so hard to find. And somehow through social media, we found this group called Radical Aid Force. Uh, four Germans. They called themselves anarchists, and uh, I've never met them. I've spoken with them many times, and somehow they could find in some little shop in in Germany or in Copenhagen or France, they could find exactly what we needed, whether it's night vision or uh, a chest seal or uh, 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 these the first aid kits. These guys could find it all over Europe, and at least once a week they would make a trip. Uh, once a week, they would make a trip into Ukraine, uh, often in you know dilapidated vehicles, uh, bringing bulletproof vests, helmets, any special requests we had, and and it really was it was amazing to see this sense of cooperation because there's no way without their help that we could have got those supplies uh, in the early days of the war. And I was just talking with with one of these guys. He goes by the code name Nestor, and you know they're they're, they're sort of ra- they're radical leftists. They hate war, but they knew that this war had to be fought for freedom. And Nestor told me. Fighting back with all your might is the right of every human being. The brutal actions of the Russian army cannot be st- stopped with talks and negotiations. And then I asked him why he calls himself Nestor. And he said he knew nothing about Ukraine in, in, until the uh, early days of the invasion. He was just inspired to come here and help. And then he began to read Ukrainian history. And there's a great Ukrainian from the 20th century called Nestor Makhno. And he was a Kozak leader uh, in the wild steppes, the Dikopoli, the wild fields. And he had this... Well, the, the people in Moscow, the authorities accused him of being an anarchist, but he really was advancing this idea of Ukrainian democracy, where people are independent of the government and dependent on each other, a strong family, a strong community. And uh, as my friend in Yuri, who's a scholar of Nestor Makhno, my friend Yuri in Lviv said, in essence, uh, this Kozak uh, democratic state in the early 20th century, it was the only anarchic, anarchic state that was ever implemented. And so here you have this, this guy in Germany who was a fan of punk music and found some inspiration uh, in the early days of the war and came to Ukraine and realized that, you know, his whole life he thought of himself as some kind of anarchist. And he found this uh, this Kozak uh, sort of hmm. philosophy uh, of liberty and freedom. And in fact, the Kozaks had a constitution of separation of powers in 1711. And so this is uh, this fight against Russia and against tyranny is, is not new. It's been going on uh, for centuries. And uh, and so uh, Nestor said, you know, they 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 dis- he says we despise the Russian decision makers and though and the soldiers and those who are responsible for this war. He also says they don't trust uh, big institutions. Uh, he says NATO is no exception. Uh, but when you think about, you know, I think of the early weeks of the war and there were so many well-funded uh, nonprofits uh, that came here and they had highly paid employees and many of them did some good work. But a lot of those people are gone now. And the ones who are left are these like wild you know, wild souls, these four Germans in their beat up vehicles that are always breaking down, uh, coming here every week to help with evacuations. Uh, they get the, the impossible to find supplies that can save lives. Uh, and so if anyone wants to help support them, you can go to uh, ukrainianfreedomnews.com, click on support us, and you can use We have a tax deductible option through uh, our friends in America that have a 501c3 nonprofit. So you can click on that. And, you know, they I mean, one of the major expenses they have is gasoline to get, you know, from from uh, from Germany to to Ukraine. I mean, obviously, that's quite expensive now. Uh, so if anyone wants to support these guys, they're really a fantastic group, radical, radical aid force. And you can help out at Ukrainian Freedom News dot com. We've got a link to Ukrainian Freedom News on our website, too, where we post Joseph's reports, and you can see his videos, too. Go to WGNRadio.com, and our show page has all of that. Joseph, hopefully it'll be a peaceful weekend for you, and uh, I hope on May 12th we can tell you that you won a Peter Lizagor Award. You deserve it. Well, all, 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 as they say in Ukraine, Zorazom, all of us together. Uh, and it's really, it's, a, it's amazing team. You, uh, you have Bob and... Uh, all together with the listeners and everyone here every step of the way. Thank you, Joseph. Stay healthy. Happy Easter. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Well, which side are you on? На чьей стороне? Come on now, oh, which side are you on? На чьей стороне? Ебать.